Hi guys, welcome to Soundwave TV. We're here with one of the most blistering bands on the whole festival, the Mighty Meshuggah. Hello. How are you going? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, so how's the week been? We, we did a couple shows, I guess, at Soundwave shows early on in the week. Here in Melbourne, we played a, an off, like a sideshow with Devin Townsend at the Forum. It was a you know, great night. And Have you I, known him a long time? or? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah we. We had um, a strapping young lad, one of the, his former bands, uh, were out with us in, in the U.S. already in 2003, and we knew him before that even. So yeah, we, we, it's a long-term really yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of deal, yeah. you know. What do you? What did you? Have you guys sort of taught each other about music? Like, what has he kind of opened up to you? Uh, he's quite prolific. Definitely, mm -hmm. you know, he's he's definitely um, in a lot of ways a, a genius, you know, in in in, in what he's done over the years and and strapping on lad is one of my absolute you know favorite metal bands of all time so it's a, it's a shame they're not doing that anymore you know yeah. and you guys have been locked up in a in your studio for the last little while making your record what yep. did you kind of what was um what did you sort of set out to do and you know how is this unique this, this experience we, we just um we, we never really talk about like before we start yeah. writing an album we really we never really set out any kind of rules or anything for what we want to do it's rich. We just, yeah we just kind of try to write music and and uh, this time around it just kind of ended up being uh i think the album as such is probably the most straightforward album in a lot of ways that we've had you know yeah. it's got a, a really cool kind of sound and vibe to it where we we did focus a lot on kind of getting the groove to kind of shine through you know yeah. and so you can kind of hear the groove it's, and it's got a real physicality to it like yeah. just from the songs i've heard it's got a real like yeah as it's you say a groove but it's a different kind of a groove it's a yeah. sugar groove yeah. yeah so that's kind of something that we we spent a lot of time and effort to trying to get that vibe going you know can you tell us a bit about the lyrical story of the record if there's one uh, kind of reoccurring kind of topic that that, that it's touched up on in different and um in a few different songs, it's uh, it would be like dogma and doctrine and the way that that uh, re religion kind of how it's infused in politics and how it how it works or how it doesn't work, you yeah. know. Um, so there's a few. Uh, th if there's a, like a more of a topic, you know that that it's you know that that it is in a few of the songs. It yeah. would it would be kind of things like that, like what you've seen in. In, in the Middle East, for example, over the last few years, what you've seen in North Korea, where you have one man actually with too much power, and and that person actually becomes a god, or he demands a complete, you know, subordination from a whole people, and in that sense, he's a god. So you have that side of things, and then you have the religious side of things, like man as god or god as god, and you know, yeah. all the dangerous implications that comes with well, it's, it. It's dangerous. So, so someone sent me a Christopher Hitchens quote the other day about how it's funny how religion at its heart has a really good, I'm not going to quote it perfectly, but at, a, at its heart religion has a great moral compass but ultimately it justifies people to behave in horrible disgusting ways and feel justified in it. Yeah right? and that's another mm. thing too like as far as a moral compass I, I, I mean human, to be human and to be humane is it's plenty for as far as guiding you morally and yeah, I don't think moral has anything to do with religion yeah. but Christopher Hitchens a uh, uh, shame he, he's uh, not with us anymore yeah. but he's definitely one of the uh, big inspirations for me for this album as far as oh, the lyric writing fantastic yeah. Yeah. yeah no he wrote some incredible stuff like oh, visceral absolutely. stuff and dangerous stuff and yeah. um, it's interesting to sort of take him into yeah I think he'd like that you know I think it would yeah. I think it would uh, that that book uh, God is not great yeah. I, that's the one book I ever read I think that I read back to back twice yeah. just wow. started over right as I finished because yeah. it's just so much information in it, yeah know? what kind of religious background do you guys have uh, I was actually brought up I, in a uh, Christian religious family yeah. you know when I was a kid yeah. uh, my parents are still religious and um, they go to church and so on I yeah. kind of treaded <laughs> treaded left you know yeah, when yeah. I was uh, maybe like four, 13 14 you know yeah. There's part of it that's, uh, you know, fine and okay, but uh, any kind of extreme behavior within the within the framework of that religion immediately becomes very dangerous and Definitely. very narrow-minded, and you know. What kind of stuff do you read? Do you read a lot, or? Uh, well, Christopher Hitchens yeah. is one of the ones I've read over the last couple of years. Some Robert Anton Wilson and yeah. Noam Chomsky on like as yeah. far as like social and and a lot of things that that's been going on, you know, over the last two decades basically or even further back you know 
just looking at how like the big war machines actually work. Do you feel like it's a bit, um, Devin was saying it's almost like a bit of an arrested development, this whole world, like you kind of live in this bubble where you can be whoever you want to be and you don't have to deal with life and it's it's quite, you know, it's almost quite contained and yeah. Yeah, yeah, Is definitely. Is it strange or? You, I mean, it's it, it would be kind of hard for me to say that it's strange because it's been your life for 22 yeah, years. Yeah, so you, you're uh, you're kind of accustomed to it, but but uh, trying to kind of step out from it and kind of look in on it, it it definitely has a kind of a weird way to live, I guess. And, yeah. And it's like uh, we were talking about about it the other night, me and our bass player Dick, and like, what what do you do when like when you can't play double bass drums like that anymore? You have to kind of you know what's next all yeah. it quits like what am i going to do then do you ever think about that like do you guys plan to kind of no there, no yeah. there's no plans like that oh, thank god know? no <laughs> no nothing like that but it, at least i think everyone thinks of it yeah. from time to time eventually like, mm, yeah eventually well i'm glad you got a new record out and you're kind of in that mode yeah yeah absolutely it's interesting kind of when you throw sugar into the mix of a 90 band festival how different you sound like you know there's a lot of bands you kind of go oh they sound like that and they sound like that but i can't like i find it hard to kind of think of a band that sounds like Meshuga. You know, you guys, you know, a lot of bands rely on sort of three chord stuff and melody and, and, you know, hooky choruses and stuff. Whereas you guys seem to be a lot more sort of rhythmically driven. What, what kind of, what sort of set you on that path? It's, I don't know, man. It's, a, we've just been kind of doing it for such a long time that it's, by now it's, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly like when do you start doing yeah. things a certain way, you know. Uh, even when I joined the band, which was in 1990, yeah. oh my God, yeah. <laughs> 22 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not even talk about yeah, that yeah. anymore. <laughs> but but uh, uh, they had already kind of set on like kind of a sideways path a little bit, and uh, where where it, as you say, it's like the whole the whole band is more, I guess, of a per percussive unit more than than anything else. You know, it's not as melodically driven as a lot of bands it's more on the rhythm side of things and it just kind of developed and it evolved from that and you know it's hard to say why or, yeah you know. well you are a pretty amazing drummer thank you <laughs> I, I i mean i i try it's hard sometimes you know it's definitely challenging music and it's uh it's i don't think i ever have a night when i nail it you know that never happens you know there's always a lot of tiny mistakes usually I don't think the crowd here is much of it yeah, I doubt it I really yeah. doubt it yeah. it's, it's funny um, one of my mates saw your show the other night and they should rename Meshuggah to Mindfuck because it was just so intense and who, what it's a band that blows your mind like you know there, there's quite a few bands that I, I mean not in the sense not in the style of music that we're doing I mean I think definitely think I think we all feel that like we're doing something that that is kind of unique and mm -hmm. Uh, but bands like Mastodon and Clutch and there, there's a there's a bunch of like peers or bands that are out now that are really amazing.